when you thought that everyone is out there destroying the world, these superhumans are here to save it. animals that they take care of here. Some of them are actually endangered species, believe it or not. And they not only work here in Florida, but they go to places like Colombia and Madagascar um, to help these uh, endangered species work with other wildlife centers and get these animals the help that they need and help with deforestation problems um, so that these animals can have better homes out there in the world. So it's so awesome. I can't wait to walk around with these guys and show you what it's all about. So at five o'clock, because he used to ride with a truck driver, yes. he starts cussing. But how does he know it's five o'clock? His little internal clock. But has a five o'clock traffic. That is hilarious. Yeah. So specifically, there are three endangered species here, and I think also the ring-tailed lemurs are endangered mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. um, the red-roofed lemur, the black and white-roofed lemur, and the. Um, cotton top, top tamarind, tamarind, which is a monkey um, from Colombia. Colombia. So we're gonna go check out which one? The black and white roughs. Black and white roughs. Very excited. Okay. One of the things we do is we created this open habitat where they'll spend their days in these trees. Wow. And, and they, they don't get out because you have you have fences all around. Right. They don't get out, wow. but they raise their own troops in here. Yeah. Um, and then when those babies are raised by their parents, they're better able to raise their own babies. Yeah. Send them out! Send them out! <laughs> It's so great. You know, I was asking her, I was asking you when we were on the phone if uh, if they had enough room to run around. And right. this is what she was talking about. This is a full, just open space here. I mean, right. you can't get any more wild. So that's amazing. Wow. These black and white rift, rift lemurs are from Madagascar, just like the cartoon that you've all seen, All Hail King Julian. It's right. on Netflix. Oh, be nice. <laughs> but, um, there's only a thousand of these like left in the whole world. In the wild, in the whole world. In the whole, wow. But they only they only exist in Madagascar, so that is kind of the whole world. And you've wor you've partnered with the Wildlife Center in Madagascar as well. We send some of our donations to a group called Green Again Madagascar that works on um, reforestation. So they're actually working with farmers who, in the past, have done like um, slash and burn agriculture tore down the forest and they're teaching them how to do it in a more sustainable way and how to respect the lemurs you know and the the trees and the plants so it's a pretty cool program here um, in the sloth enclosure there's also a couple ring-tailed lemurs in here hi these guys move super slow So this is the animal that gets the most stressed. I feel like I should lower my voice. <laughs> this is the animal that gets the most stressed out, right? Yes. Of all of them. Yes. Just to keep that in mind. While he may be popular, he does not appreciate his popularity and would like to be alone. <laughs> Sloths became super popular for some reason uh, at some point. Remember that? They're he, very, very popular. Just like, why is the sloth so popular all of a sudden, right? right? Kale. Why did kale become so popular as a vegetable all of a sudden? It's been around for thousands of years. Just like kale, have you heard about kale? Sloths, have you heard about sloths? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. they're exploited, really, yeah. really heavily exploited here in the United That's States. That's what's bad, and when an animal becomes popular is people start to get them as pets. Right. 
Yeah. And people, you know, places like this will sell um, interactions with slots where you can hold the slot or you can. You and know, they have don't wine like to be held at all. It doesn't matter whatever. if they're raised from babies up or anything so, like that by humans, right? right? They don't like to be held. They don't like to be held. Regardless of the fact that they hug you, they hug you because that's how they hold a tree, but they don't like to be held, so don't do right. it. Right. Yeah. can see behind us here these are the cotton top tamarinds and these guys come from Colombia and this is as big as they get okay we're saying that when you went to Colombia um, what was that what was your experience like there seeing them in the wild yeah so we went to meet with a group that does like boots on the ground conservation mm -hmm. um, trying to connect the 8% of forest that's left so mm -hmm. that they can travel like from piece to piece um, it was pretty amazing. We went with them in the woods and they have like a tracking device. So it took us about two hours to find. Oh, I was wondering. Yeah. Yeah. And we found five of them, a group of five. Okay. And observed them and watched them for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, what was sort of sad is with only 8% of the forest left and in little pieces, like a piece here, a piece here, a piece here, there's no room for them to, to grow and breed and create more because there's no territory. Because of this, what you call slash and, slash slash and, burn. and burn agriculture. agriculture just basically like just plowing down. Plowing down the forest. The rainforests. And these guys had nowhere to live, you know, so. So what's really happening sad. there is like, you'll have a natural family troop and then as they get older, eventually females or males will get pushed out. Mm -hmm. That's the time like, go son, go daughter, you know, go make your own family and have a great life. Right. But there's, they, there's nowhere college. left. After college, yes. <laughs> yes. And don't get married too soon. <laughs> but uh, there's not enough forest left, yeah. so when they get pushed out, there's nowhere for them to go. So they wind up like on the outskirts of farms and, you know, where people are. And mm -hmm. then... And that can be dangerous, right? Very. They can get run over. They can get run over. They get stolen and sold because they're very valuable. Well... As a kid, all I wanted was a ring-tailed lemur, right? Or a koala as a pet. But here's the thing and why it's not a good idea. These guys, they come in packs. Look how cute he is. Okay, this guy has been raised by his mother. You don't want to take these animals away from their mothers. Um, if you do and you raise them in solitary, like most people do with their pets, they start to become aggressive at two to three years old and they bite you and they try to dominate you. And if you've ever been dominated by a primate, it's really not fun. And it will continue and continue and actually they don't have very good lives either once they've been raised by humans that way. So if you're thinking about it, just don't do it. Buddy. Hi. We're just coming over to see your friends. Oh, they're coming to see us. Okay. So this is one family. Oh one, my goodness. One related family. Oh my goodness. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so we were saying, you know, with all these exotic animals in one sanctuary, you have to be very specific on who you put with who, or you might you start out with three animals and then you might end up tomorrow with two. Right, right. can't put predators with, with predator, we can't put predatory animals with animals that they would, you know, dominate. Yeah. Okay, so that wraps it up. That was, wow, it was in, in so incredible. I learned 
A lot, right? And if you want to sponsor one of these animals, you can for as little as $25 a month. That is nothing, but it would make a huge difference. Like I said earlier, their budget per month here, the lowest is 30,000 a month. So, you know, we gotta keep it coming in to keep these animals happy. Um, also, if you want, they have events like uh, the sloth meditation, the lemur yoga, and the painting with primates. So that's super fun. They do these events to try to bring awareness um, around like what's going on with these endangered species, bring in more money. And these donations, again, they go all across the world to different places, the other wildlife centers that they partner with. So um, make sure to check them out. Again, it's chasesanctuary.org. And it was so great to be here, guys. Thank you so much for having me. And I wish I could spend way more time with these animals. That would be absolutely awesome.